Hello and welcome to another Malware Forensic Analysis video. I apologise now for my voice, I seem to be losing it, so uh, sorry if I'm coughing a bit and clearing my throat out. Um, what uh, we did in the last video was uh, we took this malware sample called verut.ce, which is a polymorphic sample, uh, we executed it, we then used Oli uh, Debug to attach onto that process and dump out its unpacked and unencrypted payload and we then loaded it into wider so we could have a look uh, and just double check if if what we noticed in earlier videos such as uh, the malware calling out to IRC channels uh, that we could actually see it in uh, in the assembly that we'd, we'd pulled out um, and that, that all worked fine. What we're going to look at in this video is we're going to look at techniques to get past uh, more stringent anti-debugging techniques what I've noticed with uh, some uh, malware, especially on mobile platforms, is that they'll use um, they'll use uh, operating system limits that have been set, such as number of processes, uh, the number of uh, ptrace processes that can hook into a process, and then once you reach that limit, you can't attach a debugger onto onto your executed malware sample. Uh, so what we're going to do with this video is we're not going. We're going to look at dumping out uh, a running processes um, uh, executing uh, payload without the actual uh, process itself knowing that we're doing so. So what we're going to do is we're going to execute this particular piece of malware. We're going to snapshot this machine, and then we're going to use that snapshot to extract um, the the running process out of RAM and then we're going to dump it back in IDA and have a look at it. Uh, so first of all, let's let's uh, crack on and we'll have a look at executing this and collecting the... Um, we'll have a look at collecting the snapshot first and then we'll have a look at the tools that we're going to use to interpret that. <clears throat> so malware is running. Again, it's still packed. It's purple in there. So we're now going to just give that a few seconds for it to continue executing. I've got a firewall, um, I've got the full documentation for the lab that's set up, but I've got a firewall that sits between us and uh, the internet. So this, this, the IRC calls being made out aren't, aren't going to actually go anywhere at the minute. Uh, so let's take a snapshot and we're going to call this infected. So although that says it's taken the snapshot, it's probably still yeah, it's probably it's still working at taking that snapshot. So we'll just give it a few minutes. Uh, well, looking at that, it'll be a few seconds to take that snapshot, and then we'll just pause this this Windows machine for now, as uh, we won't need it, and we'll switch over to our uh, Ubuntu box that we've got in the environment and start trying to pull apart the uh, the snapshot for this. Okay, so that's a snapshot taken. Let's just pause this machine for now, because we don't need that, that malware running. Um, we're going to head into where our VMs are, and uh, Forensic 1 we will explore. So we've got a series of snapshots here. Uh, one is taken today at um, 10.57, so the, these, these are the snapshots that we kind of care about, and so we'll copy those. We need both of these, so one's like the main um, the main uh, sort of uh, memory, and this is the, the sort of differential with that, and we'll need them both to be able to create a, a, um, a memory dump that's compatible with something like WinDebug, which is what our next tool needs. So we'll copy the, both of these because we'll need them both and we'll dump them into this shared folder that I've got with Forensic 2 which is our Ubuntu box. So let's paste those in. Okay, so we've got those now in a location where we can get to it from our Ubuntu box. Uh, let's just have a quick look at the tools that we're going to be using. So the first tool, um, we're going to use this, this tool provided by somebody from VMware um, and what it does is it takes these two memory files, um, the the vmem and that smaller one that was just the snapshot itself, 
and it um, it combines them into one single crash dump file, one core dump file, sorry, that uh, is compatible with WinDebug, which we can then load into our next tool, which is a pretty awesome tool. I love this tool. It's, uh, it's called Volatility, and it's pre-compiled for loads of different platforms, so you can literally just download the binary and just start running it straight away. And it lets you, um, it lets you uh, interrogate that core dump and list processes and dump out those individual processes and uh, we can then like take that individual dump and then shove it back into wider and, and see see what we've got unfortunately those uh, they'll be like any other dump from an operating system that all of the links will be broken so you won't be able to execute those again unless you kind of fix those links uh, it's a real pain to try and do so I pretty much use this just for doing some static analysis uh, afterwards so let's hop over to our Ubuntu box and this is one that we set up in the lab so it's still got the password Bob 1234 it's nothing spectacular um, we'll head over to the terminal and so that um, shared directory is, is um, be this large one here so let's go in and have a quick look and double check that those files are there and all shared out. okay so we've got those two snapshot files just make this window a bit bigger um, and we want to use that first uh, program, um, yes, VMSS core, and let's have a look at what options we can pass in. Uh, so what is it expecting? It can pass it some options, it wants the VMSS file first and then the VMEM file. You'll notice that the files that we've actually got are VM SN, it's just it seems to have uh, SN if you're using VMware Fusion. I've used VMware Workstation before, and you know these these are the file types used by uh, Workstation. And we want an option that's going to create it in a format that we can interpret with volatility. Okay, it's this one here. So minus capital W will create a Win Debug file, and that's what we want. Okay, so. I think we're good to go. Let's run this. So we want minus W. We want um, we want our VM SN file first, and then we want our VM EM file next. And fingers crossed, we'll see if that runs. Okay, so that's running. I may I've I've kind of cheated a little, so I took the memory. Um, the total memory of this box down to about one gigabyte on the Windows box, just so that the uh, the memory we were extracting was smaller. If you've got like an eight gig Windows box um, and you want to do something like this, I've temporarily reduced the memory on it. Uh, run whatever executable you want, drag the mem, um, do your snapshot, and then do your memory all allocation on that, and then just increase it again afterwards. If you run any other tools on it. Um, Okay, so that's the core dump done. So we've got memory.dmp. So now we just need to run volatility on this and um, see if we can list the processes that are in this and see if we can actually get it working. So I've got volatility already installed. <coughs> and um, let's have a quick look at what we passed volatility. So um, minus F will be the file name. We need to pass it a profile. How do we find profile? Okay, so we need minus minus info to find the profile for our operating system. And that might be enough just to get going. Uh, what do we want? We want to be able to list the processes. So we want PS list. Okay, let's do this. So volatility, and we wanted uh, minus F. And it was a memory dump. We then wanted uh, a profile. Oh, I guess we need to know what profile to run first. So let's figure out which um, profile we want. So it's a Windows 7 box. It's got Service Pack 1 and it's an x86. So that's the one that we want. Okay, I think we've got everything we need. So let's uh, do this volatility. It's minus F memory if it was profile uh, was equal to um, 
the X, uh, the Windows 7 box, and then we wanted PS list. Okay, so we weren't a million miles away because it's actually trying to execute it. <clears throat> okay, right at the bottom, here's our malware running, and I think that's the process ID. Yeah, so that's the process ID uh, that we're interested in. So it's 292. So we just want to dump that one out. So let's have another look at how we dump that out in volatility. Um, so I can't, I want to be able to dump, so there's any dump certs files and registries. Is there a process dump? Okay, so there is a process dump. Dump a process to an executable file sample, and then how do we use that? So it hasn't got like a minus minus option for it, so I'm, I don't know how you actually pass it the process. Okay, well, I guess we can guess with this. Um, so we want um, pop dump. Let's see what that says. Please specify dump directory. Doesn't, I bet it's like a minus P. It is in most programs. We'll run that. And then it was 292, and then it wants dump directory. Now, we could dump it into this directory here, but it's a shared directory between my development machine and I've got ESET running, so I'm pretty sure it's got a virus <coughs> Excuse me, in it, it's going to trigger, so let's not do that. Instead, let's, um, in, in fact, let's make a directory in our, in the home directory. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so let's make a directory called um, process export. Okay, so that's that process there. That's where it's going to go. So if we go back. So that's our command, this is where we want to dump it. <coughs> and it ran. <coughs> oh dear, yes. I accidentally copied the wrong directory. So at least I know my antivirus works, and I know that that process is definitely a virus. Um, it's picking it up as something other than Virut CE, but that's probably just because of because of ESET. So we'll delete that. And that was, of course, just to check my antivirus on my machine. <laughs> um, but let's do this properly. Excellent, we've got the process. We know it's the right one because it just triggered my AV. Let's hop back over to the Windows box and we'll open it up in IDRA and we'll have a look. So we'll go back to, um, let's go back to it before it's infected because uh, this virus is a bit of a pain even killing it there. It's, I mean, it's infected so many processes by now. Um, <clears throat> and then let's hop over to that Linux box and copy that process. Bob and Bob one two three four. Uh, and we want in our export two nine two. Copy that back. And we'll hook into IDA. We'll have a quick look at that process. 
exports and yeah, I mean it's completely broken. But it should give us enough to have a look. I mean this looks this looks pretty much the same as um, dumping it out using Ollie. You know, it's got that that feedback loop here. It looks pretty much the same. Let's have a look at strings. And we've got the IRC connections. We've got the nickname for the channel. So this is all pretty much the same. We've got everything we need, exactly like we did with Ollie. Uh, if you really wanted to, you're in quite a good position with this to try and fix um, fix all the links uh, to it and trying to get it executing the same as, as this malware sample would. Uh, I'm pretty sure if we ran that, it wouldn't work anyway. Yeah, so yeah, it's completely broken. But well, you could fix it, I suppose, if you really wanted to invest the time in it. But you're probably better off investing that time elsewhere within a forensic investigation. Um, that's uh, all I wanted to show you. Uh, if you've got any um, questions or comments, please place them below. And uh, if you liked this video or you wanted any uh, uh, other videos uh, like it or particular videos surrounding it, then again, please let me know and feel free to share and like my channel. Thank you for watching.